Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we are going to do two problems from NLM. This is CYU15 and this is CYU27 and we'll also discuss the homework problem that I gave you in the last video. So let's start by picking up the homework problem. Okay guys, so in this question the first thing is that the ratio of OF is to OO1 is 1 is to 2, right? Now if I separately draw the rod, uh, we have G1 force acting at this end and this is the hinge point, let's say. There will be some reaction force due to the pantograph mechanism on the left. So let's call the reaction force as F. So now I can balance the torque about the hinge point O. As the distances are in the ratio of 1 is to 2, the forces should also be in the ratio of 1 is to 2. Okay, so I can say F into L equals G1 into 2 L. So from here we get F as 2 G1 by torque balance. Okay, so now we are going to uh, isolate the pantograph mechanism over here. So the mechanism exerts a force of F on the rod in the downward direction which means my Newton's third law, we can say the rod exerts a force of F on the mechanism in the upward direction. So the force F is acting at this particular point in the upward direction and at the bottommost point we have the weight G1. So now we are going to use the principle of virtual work here. As I explained to you in the previous video, uh, the net virtual work done by all of these hinge reactions that are internal, uh, they will all add up to zero. So the only virtual works that we have to consider here is the virtual work due to this force this reaction force F and due to this weight G1. Okay, so now let's just define the coordinates. Okay, so now if this distance is Y, then this distance, we can easily see that it is 3Y. Let's mark it as 3Y. Okay, so now let's consider a virtual displacement. So let's say this bottommost hinge actually displaced down by a small amount of delta. So delta is nothing but small change in the length 3Y. So, so the displacement of this hinge over here, let's call it as F. Del F is nothing but the small change in the length Y. So now we can compare these two equations and you can see that D of Y is nothing but delta divided by 3. So this is going to be delta by 3, which means if I displace this point by a small distance of delta then this point f actually moves down by an amount of delta by 3. Okay so now we can easily apply the principle of virtual work so so the work done by g1 is going to be g1 times delta and it's going to be positive and the work done by this force f is going to be minus f times delta by 3 right because the angle between the force and the displacement is pi so this is going to be minus f times delta by 3 and from here we get that g1 equals f by 3 and earlier we got f as 2 g1 okay guys so this was g2 so from here we can see that uh, f is nothing but 2 g2 and from here we get g1 by g2 as 2 by 3 and which was option a now let's move on to the nlm problems okay guys so uh, in this question we have three identical cylinders which each of mass m and they are arranged on a horizontal floor as shown in the figure with their axis horizontal. The floor as well as the cylinder are frictionless. So there is no friction anywhere. So you apply a constant horizontal force directed to the right on the left cylinder. For what range of F will all the three cylinders remain in contact with each other? What they are claiming is there is going to be some limit of F that varies from F min till F max for which all the three cylinders uh, maintain contact with each other. and we have to determine that range, okay? So we'll begin, let's just begin by drawing the FBDs. Okay guys, so this is how the situation is. Now, uh, as we are talking about the range that varies from F min to F max, uh, we can easily say that they all maintain contact within this range, right? So if they all move as a single system, I can easily determine the acceleration of the system as the net force acting on the body divided by the total mass, okay? So now as we have the acceleration, uh, Let's just observe everything with a frame that is traveling with this acceleration. So in that case, we have to apply a pseudo force. So let's name these cylinders first. This is cylinder one, this is cylinder two, this is cylinder. Okay guys, so now let's draw the FBDs of cylinder one and cylinder three. So the forces are Mg, N1 and N3. So N1 is the contact force between one and two. N3 is the contact force between one and three. Okay, so now we also have to apply the pseudo force on this. So that is going to be F by 3M multiplied by M towards the left which is going to be F by 3. Okay, so now the cylinder is at rest. So we can write we can write the horizontal and vertical force equations. You know, these are the two equations that we get. And after solving for N1 and N2, N3, we get these two relations. So now there is one more normal that we have to figure out. And for that, let's take the FBD of cylinder 3. Okay, so in cylinder 3, I only want the horizontal force balance. So I am ignoring the Mg and the ground normal. So from here, we get N2 as F by 3 minus N3 by 2. So after solving for N1, N2 and N3, these are the relations that we obtain. And from here, one thing is for certain, N1 can never be equal to zero, which means the contact between these two cylinders will always be maintained irrespective of the value of F. So now if you observe N3 and 
if I solve for the inequality in 3 must be greater than 0, what I obtain is f should be less than square root of 3 mg and m was 10 root 3. So if you solve it, it comes out to be 300 Newton. So as long as n is less than 300 Newton, the contact between these two cylinders will be maintained. The moment it is greater than 300, this contact will be lost. Okay. So and similarly, if you solve for n2 greater than 0, you'll obtain that the force f should be greater than 100 Newton. So if the force f is less than 100 Newton, then the contact between these two cylinders will be lost. So that was it for this problem. So now let's move on to the next problem. Okay guys, so this is the last problem of the day. This problem is really nice in my opinion. So the problem states that we have a uniform rope whose mass is m and its length is l and it is spread out on a horizontal frictionless surface wrapping half turned around a fixed vertical frictionless cylinder whose radius is small in comparison to the length of the rope. So initially both the ends of the rope pulled by equal forces f uh, as you can see in the diagram uh, keeping these two strings parallel basically and and their lengths are over, uh, and the lengths of these two parts are also equal now suddenly the pulling force at one end is removed so one of these f's is removed and only one f is remaining now without any change in the pulling force at the other end now after how much time from removal of the pulling force in the end will the rope start losing contact with the cylinder so give this problem a good try guys before you watch the solution okay, so with that let's get into the solution okay guys so this is how the situation is now looking like so if you observe the string over here the only force that is driving this string along the horizontal surface is this force f the normals are always perpendicular to the string right and there is no friction present in the cylinder or in the horizontal surface so the only force that is driving it is f so if i assume the acceleration of the rope as a then i can easily write a as f by m okay so this is the first equation and uh, also it was given that f is a constant so the acceleration is constant right from here also write the velocity of the rope as a function of time as f by m into t v equal to a t basically and i can also write the displacement of any point on the string as a function of time as half gt squared let's say we want to figure out the displacement of this point in a time t so this we can easily write it as half gt squared okay guys so now we have a lot of things to cover in this problem okay so the first problem that we are facing is that we don't know how on the semicircular path of the wire we don't know how the normal reaction is varying with position okay so we have to first draw a differential fpd of a small section of the wire and before we do that guys we have to discuss something important so uh, so let's say guys i simply took this string and flattened it and so we are simply doing it to analyze the tensile forces at different points on the string so let's say uh, this is the end that we are being that is being pulled with the force of f the tensile force actually decreases as we go away from the point of application because let's say if you take this section over here tensile force at this acting at this particular point only has to pull this much mass whereas a tensile force over here has to pull this much mass therefore t increases as we go towards the right so let's say we want the tensile force at some point y from the point of application so let's section the part over here draw the fpd of this part so on the right we have the force f acting okay and on the left we have the tensile force t and we know that this part of the mass is being accelerated with an acceleration of f by m so now we can write f equal to ma for this section so we can write f minus t equals the mass which is the mass per unit length which is m by l times y into the acceleration which is f by m so from here tensile force t comes out as f 1 minus y by l so as you can see at y equal to 0 which corresponds to this point the tensile force is simply f and as we progressively move towards the other end the tensile force linearly decreases okay so this is a very important fact that we're going to be using so now i'm going to get rid of this part okay so now we have figured out that as we move from this point and move towards the other end the tensile force keeps decreasing so now we need to figure out how the normal force is varying uh, with different positions on the cylinder for that we need the differential fpd so let's say i pick an element at an angle of theta and i took a small piece whose angular width is d theta okay so and now i want to draw the fpd of this part so this is a zoomed view of the differential element. So this angle is d theta by 2. Similarly, even this angle is d theta by 2. So guys, so I'm assuming the tension force over here as t. You know, the convention generally says that at theta, we take t. And at theta plus d theta, we take t plus dt. And the tensile force here, so we are taking it as t plus dt. And why is the tension force here greater? Because this part is accelerating, right? So the tension at this point has to be greater. Okay, guys, so we are more interested in the, the force balance in the normal direction. Because in the 
is in the tangential direction we already know the acceleration so there is no point in doing it again so we have the normal force acting on the part let's call it as dn okay and now we have to take into account the centrifugal force guys so uh, remember we are doing it for some general time t and at some general time t uh, the rope will have some velocity right so let's just write it with respect to the rotating frame so let's just write the centrifugal force so the centrifugal force it will be in the direction of dn itself so and the magnitude is dm v square by r where r is the radii of the cylinder okay if this angle is d theta by 2 then this angle is also d theta by 2 so net force towards the center where which is going to be this would be equal to the net outward force which is dn plus dm v square by r we'll use a sine angle approximation so we can um, approximate sine d theta by 2 as d theta by 2 and we are going to ignore the dt d theta term okay finally this becomes td theta and i actually recommend you guys to remember this if you have if we have t and t at an angle of d theta the resultant of this along, along the radial direction is actually td theta so this is the force balance equation in the normal direction okay guys so now the length of this part is rd theta so dm i can write it as lambda rd theta so this just become mv square upon l into d theta okay because the r's cancel out so this is what we end up with finally so essentially what this equation says is that if you want the dn at any particular point at any general theta uh, it would be equal to the tensile force at that point into d theta minus mv square by l into d theta okay guys so now this is important so as we are talking about some time t equal to t naught at that particular time each point on the rope has the same velocity v right so this term on uh, this term over here uh, is the same for each point lying along the cylinder so the game changer is actually the tensile force t as we go along the counterclockwise sense we as i discussed that the tensile force decreases the point at which the normal reaction is minimum is actually is actually this point over here which is at theta equals minus pi by 2 because at this this is the point at which the tensile force is minimum with this information we can actually answer a very important question so let's call this point as o so this point uh, is very important guys because when the rope starts losing contact and a losing contact essentially means dn equal to 0 okay it will lose contact first at point o because this is the point where the normal reaction is the least right so at first it will lose contact at this particular point and afterwards only it will lose contact at these points over here now if you read the question in the last line they said at what time does the rope start losing contact okay so which basically means we have to equate the dn at this particular point to zero right because that's when slipping would just start so i am going to set dn equal to zero four point o okay this is important solving it will give you t at point o equals mv square by l so this is what we have to solve so now we have to determine the tensile forces point o okay now guys this is also very important guys as i said earlier from the point of application of force if you go a distance of y you section it here then the tensile force at this section is t but the thing is guys the rope itself is moving so if, as we're talking about the situation in at some time t this point itself has moved down by some distance x okay so first uh, let's determine the length so this length over here guys so uh, the entire string length is l and this string length is pi r so this length over here is l minus pi r by 2 so let's write it down so this is going to be l minus pi r by 2 this point itself moved down by an amount of x in some time t so now the point of application of force is over here okay so now we have to measure distance from this point so and from this point we have we have to move a distance of x plus l minus pi r by 2 plus pi r to reach the point o so this is the distance so this is the distance that we have to substitute in the y over here okay so now let's do that so the tensile force is nothing but f 1 minus y by l and for y here we have to substitute x plus l minus pi r by 2 plus pi r because this is the distance that we have to travel for from the point of application to the point o okay so now as we as we want everything in terms of time i can write x as half f by m into t squared using kinematics formula okay so now the thing is uh, for v over here I you can set it as f t by m and now all you have to do is rearrange the terms and you'll find and you'll figure out the time at which the rope starts slipping and uh, it'll start slipping again at the point o that was it for this video guys if you enjoyed the video please do like share and subscribe to my channel and that's it thanks for watching